Hey, good morning everyone. It's Jess. Welcome back for another gardening video. So today I'm going to be working on my front garden bed as well as getting my patio together, hopefully. Fingers crossed I can get both done today. But yeah, y'all, I want to do a whole overhaul in my front garden bed. I've been having some serious soil issues that I've been dealing with over the past few years. If you guys have been following along, you probably know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go over that with you guys. I'm also going to probably show you, I think I'm going to start with the plants first, just do a mini plant haul of what I'm going to be planting. And then I'll explain what's going on with the front bed. Okay, so here are two of the plants that I'm going to be planting today. These are Little Giant Arborvitae. Y'all know how much I love my evergreen balls. So I'm going to be planting these two. And then let me also show you the annuals I'm going to be planting. So I think I showed you guys in my last video, but these are a new variety of begonia that my local garden center just started growing this year. They are a hot pink color with dark burgundy foliage. So, so excited to get these in the ground. And then of course y'all know I had to repeat my favorite coleus. This did amazing for me last year. So I will be repeating this again this year. This is the Golden Dreams Coleus by Proven Winners. So I picked up three of these hydrangeas from Walmart, actually, you guys. There were only three left, and this is what all three of them looked like when I found them. Check out these stems, you guys. Isn't that gorgeous? So here's a look at the tag. These are called Twilight Black Stems, and these are an indoor-outdoor hydrangea. When I talked to the representative um, from the garden center that stocks Walmart's plants, um, he said that this is an annual Hydrangeas. So basically I would have to bring this in as a house plant in order to keep it alive. And he also said if I watered it, the blooms would not perk back up. Bruh. I watered this one. Check out these blooms, you guys. So, so pretty. Like look at the hot pink edge. Oh my gosh, these are so gorgeous. So I'm hoping that these will survive for me next year. I am gonna try and overwinter them as house plants. But y'all, these were originally $25, and he marked them down, I don't know if I still have a tag, yes I do, to $6.25. Could not beat that. He was like, if you're willing to take the risk, I'll mark them down for you. So y'all know me, I'm willing to try. So I'm gonna water this one, let it sit and perk up, and then get to planting. Also from Walmart, I picked up this gorgeous dahlia, you guys. Oh my God, it's so pretty. So I picked up four of these. Here's a look at this tag. It is an annual. And I think I'm gonna pot these into my container that holds my lamppost. I think it'll be really pretty to fill in the base. And then y'all know me, y'all know I had to pick up some Super Tunia Bordeaux. This is something I have to plant every year in my garden. So I also picked up two of these. Not sure where I'm gonna put them, but I'll find somewhere. So I also picked up a couple grasses. These are by Proven Winners. They're called Graceful Grasses Fireworks. They are a variegated red fountain grass. These are annual in my area. I know it doesn't look like much right now, but these get a bright red. I'll insert a picture for you guys. All right, y'all, so here is what my front garden bed is currently looking like. All of my perennials have come back and have leafed out nice and lush. Also, some of my spring bloomers have already bloomed and are starting to die back. These up here in the front are my daffodils. They've already bloomed for the season. I'll insert a picture so you guys can see what the blooms look like. I am so sorry I did not get around to filming a spring tour for you guys. I've just been dealing with a lot of soil issues up here. And as you guys know, I've also been doing a lot of repair work around my property. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to leave up there foliage for the next few weeks or so. The plants are still continuing to absorb sunlight and energy to feed the bulbs for next year and then once the foliage starts to yellow I'll just cut it back to the base and mulch over that. So that's the that on that. If you guys have been following along over the years you guys know my struggle with this front garden bed. So I do have Rosie still sitting here. She is my place marker for where I should not plant. So from her back to where that pot is sitting, pretty much around that like little white pop-up thing, that is what I've been calling my dead zone. Anything that I plant in that area dies. I have tried so many di different types of plants. I've done soil tests, soil amending. I've even dug out the soil and completely replaced it. I've tried uh, insect <laughs> resolves. Like it's just, it's been a headache, you guys. So. I did finally reach out to a representative from our Department of Agriculture. North Carolina Extension came out 
um, and he took some soil samples. He also took some photos of some of the problem plants that I've been having, sent those off to Raleigh for evaluation, and I just got those results back. So from the results, well, first of all, what I had him sample is where Rosie is sitting. I had him take a sample there. I also had him take samples from where this plant was sitting. I had to pull it out, y'all, because it was just, it was gone. I'll insert a picture. <laughs> so yeah, I t had him take samples here as well as from the rhododendron area. So I basically considered it the rock area. And then also from around my arborvitae here. So those were the three areas where Rosie is sitting. Those test results came back pretty normal. He just recommended that I add a little bit of fertilizer to the area. So y'all, I'm still at a loss. I still don't know why everything dies there. So Rosie is here to stay. She's not going nowhere. She's just going to stay there and we're never going to plant in that space. As far as the back row, you guys, I had replaced my cryptomeria that was dying last spring. Y'all, it did the same thing. It died. I have no clue what is wrong with this area, but the soil test came back off the chart. So I'm assuming that is the problem. Um, the rhododendron, I also had him sample as well because it dropped a lot of leaves, y'all. If you can see these here, these are the leaves that were like, all of this was full at the bottom and now it's pretty bald. Um, but you can see it's still in bloom. So I don't know, y'all. It was very, very wilted coming out of winter, which is typical, but it's just not like these should be spread out like a fan like they should not be drooped downward so something is still off in this area but the blooms are gorgeous so i'm gonna leave it i'm gonna treat it and see if that helps um and then my arborvitae here you guys i am so so stressed like i planted this tree from a little baby five years ago it was maybe a foot tall this is what five years of growth looks like on an arborvitae and y'all i'm just so sad it is it's browning from the bottom and initially when he first came it was literally just this side of the tree and now it's starting to spread around the whole base so i'm completely stressed the soil test came back saying that i do need to add a little bit of lime to the area um, and also recommended i add some fertilizer but i just don't think that that's i don't think that's the only problem like it just started this year so I don't know if it's the lamb's ear because if you guys remember I did not have a full ring last year I just finished that last year and I don't know if the lamb's ear is competing for root space with the tree and it's choking it out I'm not sure but I am considering removing the lamb's ear just to see if that helps because I don't want to lose this tree y'all now I know I can just replace it with another one that's about this size but it's just not the same as growing a tree from a baby and watching it grow so if you guys have any other suggestions of what I could do to help save this tree, please let me know. I'm open to them. I am going to do what the soil test recommended and my plans are to get rid of all of this rock, y'all. I have some horrible landscape fabric underneath there. It's like the plastic kind, so it's it's not good. You guys, I didn't know what I was doing <laughs> when I first started this garden bed. So I want to take up all the rock. I do have plans to use that in my backyard and I just want to have this just all one big mulched bed. So I'm hoping that that will help alleviate the issue with over here. And then I do also uh, plan to move my crypt mare over there. That one's doing fine. I don't know why this one is struggling, but that's the plan. So let's get to work. you guys I got all of the big rock up there's still like a few pebbles left which I'm not gonna worry about y'all I should have done this before the plants started flushing out that would have been a whole lot easier but I have been dreading removing these rocks so I've just been putting it off what I'm going to do next is pull up this disgusting 
cheap landscape fabric that has been here for five years at this point. I'm gonna pull that up and then start working in the amendments. y'all okay, progress so far is I have raked out all of the gunk from the area I have also spread down some garden lime which was recommended from the soil test and then I think what I'm going to do now is go ahead and dig up the cryptomeria that's over there in the far corner and also my rhododendron yes y'all I know sad it's a gorgeous beauty up here but it's going to get way too big for this area it was always in the plan to move to the backyard once I finished it but I think what I'm actually going to do is put it in my shade garden and I know it's in bloom. You shouldn't dig up plants and move them while they're in bloom, but it'll be fine. A million people in the crowd, but I only see your face in all the lights. And as the bass keep pounding on me, baby, I really wanna make you mine. y'all this has given me the perfect opportunity to reset all of my pavers that were starting to sink down so I'm actually using some of the rock that I pulled out to bring these back up to level if you guys can see they're kind of sloping and there's a big gap down there where I get weeds growing so that's what's happening currently something about you yeah
right, you guys, drip is wound all throughout the bed. I cannot wait to see how this works. So what I did over here is I just connected to my distribution line with an elbow. It starts here and then I just snaked it throughout the entire bed. So now all I'm gonna do is mulch. y'all so I got everything mulched and watered in and oh my gosh you guys I am so happy with the results I am exhausted it is almost eight o'clock in the afternoon the sun is starting to go down I started at nine o'clock this morning you guys so this was definitely an all-day project really quick let me run through and explain what I did okay y'all so I just finished watering everything in but this is where I ended up moving the rhododendron to so this pot right here actually used to sit in this location so I just moved that over popped in the rhododendron and then I moved my tree here so yeah I think it'll be happy in this space also here we are in my backyard this is where I repurposed about half of the rock I have another mound behind me that I have not put in its place yet but my idea is to keep this in kind of like a semicircle shape um, y'all this was a perfect opportunity to actually go in and clean these rocks but I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just top it off with some prettier rocks when I get the chance. But yeah, this is where some of the rock went. And then here's where the other half of the rock went. I do know where this is going. I'm just not ready to put it in the place yet. So yeah, this is kind of like my dumping ground for plants temporarily waiting to get in the ground. So here's what my front door is looking like. I did hang my reef and you guys, I think the pink looks so cute paired with these two Eugenia topiaries. Oh my gosh, I'm loving it. So I just need to get a rug to fill the space. And then I do still have my hibiscus that I got on clearance here. Cleaned it up just a little bit. It has perked up, you guys. It's just not in bloom. So stay tuned for my bloom tour. I will definitely be doing that for you guys. I did also redo my pavers here. I know I need to pressure wash you guys. It still looks crazy, but the pavers are flush with the sidewalk now. And I am loving the way that that looks with the fresh mulch. It just looks nice and tidy. I am loving it. And then as for my patio area, I didn't do too much. I just gave everything a nice hose down, cleaned all of my furniture, cleaned the shutters. I did pot up my fern. So y'all know I have to have a fern every year. Normally I do a Boston fern. This is actually a macho fern. They don't shed as much. So love, love, love the texture that provides. I do still need to go get some new cushions because mine were disgusting and I don't feel like cleaning them. So I'll just get some new ones, pop those in, they'll look nice. I did place both of my clearance um, hydrangeas on each side, just sitting on the ground for now. I may pot them up, I'm not sure. I just love how they're looking. Cute little pop of color on each corner. And then this dead looking tree back here is a hibiscus that I got on clearance, I think three years ago now. 
it will leaf out y'all it's alive trust me it'll leaf out it'll bloom it'll look gorgeous so cannot wait to see all of that fill in and then as for my front garden bed y'all did see i did a whole overhaul of the back row and y'all I am loving the way all of this mulch looks like it's just so uniform it's pleasing to the eye and I'm so glad I made the decision to get rid of those rocks so really quick I popped in my little giant arborvitae over here this one does get three to four feet tall and wide so it's actually going to get larger than the balls I have lighting my driveway so I'm hoping that it fills in this entire corner over here I did move the uh, dwarf cryptomeria that was sitting over there to the center where the rhododendron was hoping that will do well i still have my two boxwoods that have been in the ground for five years now they're doing amazing i love the lime green of their new growth like look at that pop of color y'all so so pretty i just love green and then i did also place another um little giant arborvitae over here on the corner and y'all i am praying fingers crossed that this plant survives i don't hope i don't have any more issues with the soil in this area so down in front, I do still have my two hostas here, y'all. I have to give you a close up. Look at that. Oh my gosh, is that not gorgeous? Look at that color. This is my favorite hosta, you guys. I love the yellow and that teal blue. It's like an icy teal blue. So, so pretty. So these do um, fade a little bit when we get closer to summer just because it gets a little bit more sun but I enjoy their color so much up here during this time of year. Over here in the corner, I did plant a little trio of the coleus. They were super wilted, you guys, so I just watered them. They will perk back up. Oh, I think my neighbor's done mowing. Great. Just kidding, he's not done. I hope you guys can still hear me okay. But I did decide to leave my lungwort here in the center. I think I'm actually going to pop out the pup and plant that over in my shade garden but this will fill in this entire space. And then I did plant three more of the coleus. So those will perk up and fill in and just look so gorgeous, y'all. I cannot wait for all this color. Down here on the corner, I did pop in a fireworks variegated uh, fountain grass and I cannot wait to see this color up, y'all. I just cannot wait to see everything fill in. This part of the bed does get full sun in the summertime. So that will color up nicely. The begonias will do great. These begonias can take sun, so they'll be fine. Still have my hookera here and then my drift of salvia has come back. These were on clearance last year looking really scared. They come back and look at their blooms. So, so, so pretty. I know it looks pink on camera, but they are actually purple in real life. I don't know why. I'll have to figure out how to change the settings on my camera so y'all can actually see the colors. Rosie's still holding her spot here. I do have right here next to her an anemone and then another fireworks grass that I popped in and then over here everything just stayed the same I just gave everything a nice mulching of course you guys did see I planted my drift of begonias cannot wait to see those fill in and then lastly let me show you guys my lantern here so all I did was pop out my pansies and I popped in one single super tunier Bordeaux in each of the hanging baskets and I planted all four of my dahlias down here. So I think it's gonna be so pretty. It's such a pretty mix of color in this front area. So you guys definitely stay tuned. I will definitely be giving you some garden tours as things progress throughout the season. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. Leave me a comment down below and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more from me. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.